we're going to be exploring a couple different ways to get unique values from an array. So first off, we're going to create an array, add in a bunch of duplicates in the array, and then create a new array from that array. So we're linking people one to the people array. So these are going to be working as instances of the same array content object. And then we're going to separate it out as well within another statement where we're going to be using the set in order to recreate and to set a brand new array, which is going to be a completely separate set of values from the original people array. Also creating a new people array using set and also looking at how we can use the filter method and index of method in order to create unique arrays. So there's going to be some examples of the different ways that you can create unique arrays in your JavaScript code. Go ahead and create your HTML file and link it to a JavaScript file. So I've got a file called app1.js within a folder called JS, which is on the same directory as the index file. Opened up on the right hand side, I've got the source code running and within the bottom window, there's the console from the browser developer tools. So go ahead and create the files and we're gonna create an array and then check out how we can get some unique values from the array. So we've got an array that we'll create and then add some values into the array. So I'll just add in some first names that we can use in order to select and get just the unique values of the items in the array. So I have a couple duplicates there. And so what we want to do is we want to remove out the duplicates of the items from the array. So right now when we do people array, there's the two duplicates that are still within the array. So let's create a brand new array. And this is just going to be for the unique people. So constructing the array and use the three dots in order to set the argument and then set up a new set. And within the set, we're going to use the people array. And then in the console log, output the result for new people. And we'll see what we get for the results. So that allowed us to remove out any duplicates within the array. So if we have people and if we add in some more duplicates into the array, let's create a loop is less than 10. So we're adding a whole bunch of duplicates into the array. And then we'll see if we can still remove out all of the duplicates. So add to the array and let's uh, add in a whole bunch of values there. So within the initial array, when we look within the console object, there's 15 items and there's a lot of duplicates in there. So creating a new array allowed us to remove out the duplicates. And so what happens if we take the people and we add new items into them? And let's uh, add in a new person into the array and log out the result for people. And then we'll also log out the result for new people. So doing that is going to not, bo both of the arrays are going to be completely separate instances. As sometimes when you do create arrays and you assign a new array to the existing array, even if you make some updates to that existing array, that one's going to update the new array because it's tying it to the memory location. So if we were to do people one is equal to people, and then we push so take people one and we push that value into it. That's going to affect both of those arrays. So listing out the people and people one, they're both going to have that new value that was added in there. And whereas when we do it this way, we're just recreating and we're creating a brand new instance. So it's not connected to the original array. It's a brand new array that's going to work independently of that original array. So if you want to clean up the array, so take the people and assign a value. We can do the new set. And if you want to list this out, so this is going to throw an error because we're using const. 
and here we're just reassigning an entirely new array so that's going to be selecting an entirely new array and then reassigning that value into the array so when we're listing it out at people one this is a brand new build brand new array and people one and people is no longer going to be tied together so if we add a new person and then we list out all of the arrays that we have which we'll do at the end here so the new people is going to be separate the people one is now separated from the original people array so we didn't have it added into the people array so they're not affecting each other and they're no longer tied to that same memory location so that's how you can separate out those array values and then make use of them separately within your code. You can also do this with filter, although it's gonna be a little bit longer. So let's create a, another array, we'll call it people. Being the original people array, and then the filter method, we want to filter the item and get its index value. And in the filter, we're gonna return back from the people array using index of, and then checking to see if the value of item is equal to the index value within the filter. And this actually needs to return the result. So that will also create a new array using filter. And you can shorten this slightly by removing out the return value and having all of this within the one statement. So that will shorten some of the code there and also create and return back a new unique array with the, from the values from the people array. So now it's a completely new array. So those are two methods that you can use. Depending on what you want to use, you can use the new set. You can use the filter in order to select unique items that are within your JavaScript arrays.